So I want to talk about a few different ways that we um, see or have bias, research or bias, what we can do about them. Um, one of them is in the respondents, right? So the goal is to make sure we remove bias from our work. Um, and even the best researchers will face this issue at some point. So acquiesce bias is known as the yay saying or friendliness bias. It's when a respondent has a tendency to just say yes or be positive about whatever the person is asking them. So they might think that every idea is a good one or they can see themselves liking and buying and acting on everything. Some people have that type of personality. So we have to make sure that our sample represents the population. If it's about 5% of the population, we don't want our sample to have more than 5%. Also, if the research is long, the questions, the interview, fatigue will set in and people will just say yes to just get done. So that's something to keep in mind. Another one's called habituation. Um, habituation bias, respondents will provide the same answers to questions that are worded in a similar way. And many of you have probably seen this, you get a survey and it says, how likely are you to, to recommend um, the pool at the hotel, the jacuzzi at the hotel, the entrance to the beach at the hotel? Those are kind of all similar. So it's like, yes, 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 you know, I, I'm likely, or I'm a 444, right? That's habituation. We tend to do, re repeat our answers. Again, it often happens from having too many questions or the same types of questions. So you really have to keep engagement um, and keep things conversational if it's a, a qualitative study. Um, also, desirability bias is when respondents will answer in a way that they think will lead to being acceptable or accepted and liked. It doesn't matter whether it's in a survey um, you know, or it's in uh, qualitative work. Um, researchers can minimize this bias right, by focusing on um, unconditional positive regard. So that means phrasing questions to show that it's okay to respond in any way and that not one way is more desirable than another. Um, so we don't want people to respond in a way that makes them more likable. Um, another is sponsor bias. It's when the respondents suspect that their feelings about the sponsor may bias their answers. So um, sometimes this happens in focus groups. Sometimes it happens when you hire a third party company to decide how something will be viewed by a particular group of people. So there's a sponsoring organization mission or core set of beliefs. Think about the last time maybe you interviewed for a job and you took a look at the website and maybe they strongly believe something and maybe you reiterated that in your interview. So that is a type of bias as well. So we want to limit how much as moderators we reinforce, oh, you know, great answer. Oh, I agree with you. Just keep it innocuous to help. Um, with respect to the researcher side, one form of bias is culture. It's assumptions and motivations about motivations and influences that are based on our own cultural lens, on, on our cultural relativity compared to what we are studying or the culture that we study. And that creates culture bias. Um, ethnocentrism is judging another culture solely by the values and standards of our own. Um, so we want to make sure that we minimize this bias and we move toward cultural relativism by showing unconditional regard and being cognizant of cultural assumptions, our own. We need to know what they are. Also, the order that we put questions in can be biased. Um, so when respondents are given words and ideas presented in questions that impact their thoughts and feelings and attitudes on subsequent questions. So if I rate a product from one to five, for example, and then I'm asked to make to rate a, a, a competitive product, um, they may, it's possible that the rating will be relative to the five that I just gave. So rather than thinking of, do I want to purchase from this nursery, my tree from this nursery or this nursery, uh, maybe I gave this nursery a five. So now I'm saying, well, how much does nursery B compare to nursery A, rather than just isolating it on its own. Um, so we want to avoid uh, putting questions in an order that encourages that. And of course, we want to remove any leading questions and wording, right? So um, if I believe that workers are at average working 60 hours, I don't want to say, are you working more than 60 hours? Do you feel as though you're working too much? Um, these are things that encourage someone to think, oh, maybe I'm working too much. Maybe I'm working too many hours. So we, don't, we want to remove our implication or our thoughts on them, on the respondents. And we want to summarize what people say in their own words. Um, and we also want to, uh, we want to avoid confirmation bias. So this is one of the most recognized um, forms of bias in research. And it, when, it happens when a researcher forms a hypothesis or belief and uses the respondent's information to reconfirm it. And it often takes place in the moment as researchers kind of wait um, 
uh, their confirmation, right? So um, sometimes we attempt to disprove others. Confirmation bias is something that's really deeply uh, inter internal. It's a natural tendency um, to understand and filter out what we know about the world. So we try to find and write our hypotheses or look for bias or outcomes that support what we already believe. So we want to minimize this and constantly evaluate the impression of the respondents and we want to challenge the pre-existing hypotheses, not reinforce them. So I hope this helps. Um, again, most of this is in qualitative research. Some of it, of course, question order bias is also in qualitative, how you ask questions in, um, in order in person or on the phone um, using Zoom or other technologies makes a difference. And um, there's a whole other set of making sure that we keep this out of quantitative work as well.